Let's go straight to our first question from the audience. If you can say your name and your question. Host, host professors, my name is Sky Lee from the Department of Diplomacy. My first question is, how do you believe China would react to President Xi's inauguration? And what do you believe would be China's approach on cross-strait policy across President Xi's four-year term? Thank you. Okay, Professor Wu, if I can come to you uh, first, just for a bit of context, we've been hearing a lot of speculation about what China might do around the inauguration after basically increasing pressure on Taiwan since the January election. So what do you believe China will do? Um, uh, let, we observe since Lai Qingde as the president of the DPP. Um, people still doubt whether he will you know, move to a de jure independence in the future. So I don't expect there's any kind of you know, fireworks or like warm welcome sending by Beijing. However, we can see that they still want a stabilized close relations, especially both Beijing and Washington, they want a more stabilized uh, close relations before, I think, before any time the U.S. elections. So like I say, uh, people are now talking about uh, the resumption of the tourist groups and also remove the restrictions from the mainland China tourists. I think there will be a major issue uh, right after the uh, May 20th uh, Lai Qingde inaugurations. However, this we can see as a game of tit for tat, whether uh, uh, Beijing will move first or Taipei will move first to forward their kind, we call the friendly uh, kind of signals to each other. So, so you're saying it's a test? So I think there's more test coming. Uh, the test will be from more economic perspective then moving to a more political, deep water perspective. And eventually, I think uh, Beijing will also put the 92 consensus to the midterm test for uh, lighting the administration. Professor Huang, so um, if we can classify, you know, the relaxing of Chinese tourists to Matsu uh, as perhaps carrots, you know, we know that there have been the sticks, um, essentially the increased incursions into uh, Taiwan's ADIZ as well as crossing the median line. What do you think about this carrot and stick uh, approach? Do you think actually what Beijing's doing for the inauguration has actually already started? And it's been clear that the Beijing authorities has been adopting a so-called two-tier policy. Uh, the first tier is toward the government or those organizations in favor of Taiwan independence. So Beijing is giving some harsh measures to those organizations, including the DPP government, in order to uh, pressurize this wave of Taiwan independence. And another tier is for the general public that are not for independence. So Beijing is giving more uh, goodwill measures, or some people say united front measures, to this general public in order to woo the support or woo the uh, 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 better feeling about the Beijing authorities in terms of cross-strait relations. And I would like to say that, you know, Lai Qingde is not going to enjoy some period of the so-called uh, listen to the words and watch the deeds period, like what Chen shui enjoyed before. That is, there, was, there will be no honeymoon period between the Lai government and the Beijing authorities. So I think the tense between Taipei and Beijing will continue uh, roughly on May 20th and afterwards. So, Professor Tan, what does Beijing want Lai to do? So, I, I think, of course, as we can see that Beijing has some preference over the 90, 92 consensus, and we all know that Lai and DPP will not uh, follow up. So, uh, it is a conflict that necessarily will happen L after Let's May define 20th. what the 1992 consensus is. So, so uh, there was a tacit consensus between the two parties in, in 1992 that um, we can set off, uh, set the political issues, political disputes aside and talk about other issues first. And by not talking about political issues, it kind of is respect each other's uh, claims on the sovereignty on, uh, in, on, the, on the political situation in, in Taiwan Strait. So, uh, this is something that uh, Tsai Ing-wen rejected, and you can expect that a lie would not accept it as well. Um, so uh, this, of course, would not satisfy Beijing. And uh, as, we, as we can see, that Beijing will try to push 
uh, the DPP government to uh, to accept some kind of some versions of uh, 92 consensus, but uh, it is not likely to happen. So uh, we we can ex anticipate that during the last four years there will be uh, sanctions, there will be uh, conflicts, and I, I I do think that economic sanctions are more likely, and those are targeted economic sanctions. Mm. Professor Lee, if I can bring you in. Um, so the 1992 consensus as uh, defined by Professor Chen, can I ask you, does the CCP recognize that the ROC exists? Does the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, does it actually recognize that the, C that the, that the ROC, the Republic of China, exists? Or that, does it think that Taiwan is a part uh, of China? Of course, we know the CCP has always claimed that Taiwan is part of the Chinese territory. So I don't think uh, China is going to recognize whoever the president is in Taiwan. China is not going to recognize the existence of ROC.